Hello, welcome to Beacon Hills, BC, Victoria, <laughs> Turtle Island. It's good to see you. Uh, I've just finished, completed a two-week fast. It had originally been scheduled for four weeks. I don't think that I was quite mentally prepared for four weeks and found two weeks extremely challenging but uh, extremely gratifying as well, especially with all of the little ups and downs I had. Uh, this was a this was a down. <laughs> I uh, I experienced a few um, spells of dizziness. This was day 11. Uh, I got up too fast off the couch at my friend's place, uh, lost consciousness, and woo, boom. Uh, I kind of stumbled backwards and smacked my head off his coffee table. Uh, I, felt, I thought somebody had hit me. It felt really weird, which was really strange because nobody has ever hit me. That was it was. My eyes were watering, and uh, and but then I came back in, came to back into the body and realized what had happened, and uh, I figured out later I banged up my elbow and my leg too. But that was. Uh, it, it was because I was trying to go too quickly. So, what did I learn from the fast? Well, here's, uh, I, just, I had a bath on day 12 now, uh, after the, uh, on the fast as well. A hot bath with Epsom salt, Epsom salt, <laughs> to uh, release toxins and uh, help my body continue detoxing as uh, as I was going through the fast. Uh, and I was uh, in the tub, got out too quickly again, um, actually, especially after being in a hot tub. And I kind of lost consciousness and I jumped out of body. Uh, I became aware of myself, uh, like as a, as a viewer, as a watcher, I was bearing witness as my body was going all over the place, uh, <laughs> trying to keep its balance. Uh, my feet were all over the top. Uh, I was back and forth, but magically, uh, I didn't, didn't wipe out. My body managed to stay up. I'm float and I kind of popped back in, back into the body, and at that point realized that I was really dizzy, so I just sat down on the edge of the tub and <sighs> breathed for a while. Uh, yeah, that was lucky, right? So, because if I wiped out again, that could have could have gotten fairly injurious, which wasn't the, the purpose of my fast. It was uh, to create human growth hormones, which your body naturally does when it releases all of the, the uh, toxins and to flush my gallbladder, flush my liver. My buddy Jordan Blakey is really going to be helping me out with that. Liver flush, man! I'm stoked because uh, World Liver Day is coming up, so he's going to put me through the whole flush. And uh, I'm feeling younger. Uh, I haven't quite got all of my energy back. I just started eating Sunday night. It's now Tuesday afternoon. Um, so I, 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 I don't know. I've never gone two weeks without food before. So uh, I, I'm assuming it'll be coming back uh, soon. Uh, I just have to get on to some more healthy foods. Uh, back on to raw foods right now has been challenging because having two weeks off of food um, and limited funds, it's, it's uh, been back to the shelters to get food, uh, except for on Food Not Bombs on Sunday, which is my favorite vegan meal of the week. And uh, so, slowly but surely, uh, I'm going to learn more and more about um, all of the things that, uh, as my body comes back, and it, it's already transformed quite a bit. I, I've lost about 14 pounds, uh, about a pound a day. Um, I went through a lot of dehydration. Drink lots of water. Drink lots of water. Mmm. Drink lots of water. Drink lots of water. 
It's the healthiest water you can and drink lots of it. It's what you're made of. Uh, it can sustain you. Yeah, it sure can. Because that's what you're made of. And it's good for you. I drank lots of water over those two weeks and I was dehydrated a lot. I think it was because I was also uh, doing a, a master cleanse-ish uh, cayenne, turmeric, ginger, uh, lemon, water, I'm sure, I think there was one more thing I'm missing, but, uh, yeah, those for sure, and it, it, uh, and I drank a lot of that. I think the cayenne, maybe I did it, overdid it a bit, in two weeks, I went through about two-thirds of a cayenne that was full of, and uh, so that, that, possibly could have been part of the dehydration. Um, the lemon sure made it taste nice. I really like ginger. Uh, turmeric is, is a good anti-cancer agent. Uh, that was my buddy Jordan's idea to put that in there. Uh, and then we ended up with a recipe that called for it anyways. <laughs> but I really, uh, yeah, I really had a chance to flush my body and to, to take some time and really Think about how much time I spend thinking about food. It's crazy. Because that's so much of our day is consumed with consuming. So, I really had the opportunity to listen while I was on this fast. Listen to my body. Uh, listen to the weather. We had some crazy weather. Some crazy winds. Some crazy rain. No, uh, it was extremely challenging. I spent half of the fast outside, half of the fast inside, and uh, they're both very challenging. Outside, definitely more challenging. Really hard to keep my body temperature up after at day 11, day 12, when I started getting dizzy. I had issues keeping warm, even though I was wearing everything I could find. Um, I, I was working on cultivating my inner fire, and I did do pretty good with it. I managed to stay outside for a lot of it, um, but it was very taxing. It was very hard on me. Uh, I, I got left a few times with food and nobody around. You know, and I was tempted, of course, who wouldn't be, but I managed to not eat anything, and it blew me away. Even all those opportunities that I had to sneak or cheat, I managed to get through it. I wanted to, because I wanted to prove to myself that I could go for two weeks back. Could be a handy resource one day. At least I know it's possible. Even if I never have to use it, I have that in my bank, which is a pretty nice thing to have. Just in case, because who knows? There's no guarantees in life. None. Everybody goes through hardships. Everybody goes through amazing ships. Everybody goes through all of those things. It's unique to the individual. So, uh, I highly recommend fasting. Uh, I'd recommend doing it at your own pace, not jumping into something over your own, over your head. Uh, make sure that you're aware of your physical condition. Don't be eating seriously unhealthy and then try and go fasting. I would suggest moving more into a cleaner diet, uh, getting off meat for sure as much as possible, off dairy. Those are the two things that uh, I'm really happy to mostly have shed, except for some, I have to eat some dairy at the shelters, but I'm not eating meat anymore. Yay, our place has a vegetarian option. And uh, after speaking in the coalition and homelessness, last year we were allowed to plant a garden in the hall, and from there, but, um, our place, the shelter, the shelter, took on a vegetarian option is the only vegetarian option in the city, 
for homeless people, which is fabulous, and I love them for it. Uh, it's made a big difference for me, and it's, it is very popular, which is really encouraging. Because that's something that I found about poverty, is people don't really dig it. They don't like hanging out there, but they get stuck. They got put in a place that they can't get out of. Once you have no ID, once you have no address, nobody going to give you a job, even if you want one, even if you could work. And at that point, you are only as good as your five closest friends. You're going to end up hanging out with the wrong people. Generally, because they have the same issues as you, and so you will get into the same trouble. And if you're in the same trouble as somebody else, it's not such a big deal, because there's more than just you doing it. And that's okay. That's how community works, functionally or dysfunctionally. It's still community. And a lot of people on the streets have a lot tighter relationships than people that I know that live in homes that I've, you know, that I've known for years. They're, it, there's not the openness because on the streets there's nothing to hide. When you live in a home, you can always go back and, and you have your things that you can hide. But when you live publicly, it's different. Uh, you don't have anywhere to go hide. You don't have a place for solitude. You have to create it in yourself because you don't have that space. If any time, the neat thing about being homeless or home free, as I like to prefer to call it, is that when, uh, as soon as I'm walking, I'm completely invisible. People don't see me. I don't exist. The homeless community is unsight, unseen. But as soon as we sit down, as soon as we stop anywhere, because we live outside. If we stop on a sidewalk, if we stop on a park, if we stop anywhere, we get harassed because you're not just allowed to sit there and be and not do anything because you don't pay for it. <laughs> it's a sidewalk or it's a park, whatever it is. We are become illegal. So that's the fun thing about uh, living outside is that you, as, as soon as you stop moving, you become illegal. So there will be somebody that will want you to move uh, because you're in their space. Because they pay for it, they own it, and you don't. That's where we are. This is the whole separation we have amongst people and, and each other. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, instead of coming out and sharing space and enjoying and meeting new friends, and finding out how you can all work together to create a space where everybody feels comfortable. So there's no segregation. It doesn't have to be my way, your way, the highway. It can be our way, you know? But that's communication. That's where that comes from. Conscious, aware, loving, mindful. Communication. Not COMM. Don't talk money, because that's where you get into policies and you become uh, a person. Ah, no thank you. I'm a human being. Um, so stay out of contracts <laughs> as much as possible. Talk to people as people. Don't talk to them. As, don't stereotype. Don't profile. Doesn't matter if they're wearing a, a police outfit or if they're a homeless person. Don't. Speak to them as people. Speak to every person that you meet as a person, as you would like to be spoken to, and from a calm place, conscious, aware, loving, and mindful. Do that, and you will find that your relationships grow, expand, prosper. It will be incredible, because people want the truth, and we're all hiding behind these facades crazy facades. It's not necessary. We're not perfect. We all make mistakes. Shit happens. We're all going to bounce back. Life is hard. Life is beautiful. Life sucks. Life rocks. Life has its ups and downs. But know that the middle path, the path, the road, just, that's all you need. Balance. Even keel balance. You're going to have the blips. You're going to have, your, that's, that's life. But just the less the blips and the more you get back into balance. That's where you find your peace. It's nice to have some, some good blips too. But 
recognize that the good and the bad, they're kind of in the same thing. They go together. You can't have one without the other. As soon as you decide something's good, that means something else is bad. So if something good is happening to you, that could mean something bad is happening to somebody else. Now that's just the way it is. Uh, that's that's this dichotomy that we live in, in this in our universe, which doesn't make a ton of sense right now, but it's becoming more clear as we move closer to unity, unity consciousness, a calm unity, and we develop uh, working with all of our natural resources and Mother Nature, and we develop society where everybody can thrive, not survive, not scrape by, not just live, but thrive, where we work together with technology and our natural resources in a resource-based economy. We don't need a monetary system. That's the separation. The only thing that separates people is money. That's it. The best thing that can happen to a region, which is nuts, is a natural disaster. Why is that? Because when it happens, everybody loses their titles. They just become worker bees, and they all start working together because otherwise people die. And then good things happen because those people continue to work together. They develop something called trust for each other, and from that, they build and they regenerate they start having an experience of creation. Yeah! On a global communal level where everybody's doing this grassroots in your own cities, your own towns. Grow your own food. That is the biggest revolutionary move you can make. This is not a revolution. This is evolution. It's the involution of the love-evolution. The best things that you can do for your self, for your to grow your own food. Take time to contemplate your life. Find a place where you can be at peace and visit there. Don't put it off. It's important. And try giving up some of the things that you find really important to find out how really important they are for you. I've given up a home. I gave up money. And now I'm working on transcending food. Okay? These are some challenges. I don't like wearing clothing, but right now there's really not a ton of options, especially since I just got off this fast and I haven't completely cultivated my inner fire, so I'd be a little chilly. <laughs> but another, maybe moving to a warmer climate, I can transcend clothing. I know there's, there's definitely tribes out there that have. But these four things that we, food, water, shelter, clothing, that they seem to have control over us, I'm trying to transcend, I'm trying to give up. Um, I've had a very tough time of it. 28 months outside has been a challenge. Uh, I haven't been outside for the entire time, but for the majority of it, yes. Uh, before that, I wasn't even an avid camper. I loved camping, but I wasn't good at it. It was just a place to go drink. It wasn't uh, something that I did on a regular daily basis or to try and keep myself alive. So this has been an, an enormous challenge. Uh, I'm starting to feel like in order for me to continue teaching, I may... I don't know. I may move inside uh, just to have a place to help people so that I can bring people back to do one-on-one -on -one counseling, to do coaching, to to do workshops. I love my home, but it's, it's a challenge out here. And living without money uh, and in the elements is very hard. Um, I do what I can to get by. I'm 
pretty resourceful. Uh, the universe is amazing. It takes care of me in every way, shape, and form as long as I give. That's where I come to do these videos. This is my way of giving back, giving back to the universe for all that I've received from the knowledge uh, that I've gained by my life experience, by trying things on, by trying things on. If I don't, if I wanted something new, I try it on. I'm going to try that on. I'm going to see how it looks, see how it feels, see how it fits, see what makes me tick. And if I like it, I adopt it into my being. Fasting is now a part of who I am. I'm not done. I'm done for this fast, but I'm going to do it again. Maybe next time three weeks, maybe next time four weeks, maybe next time four days. Again, who knows? But it is definitely a, a part of my life and something that I'm going to use to reinvigorate myself, to regenerate my body structure, to allow it to do what it needs to do to keep me sustained. And I want to be better than sustainable. I want to be regenerative. I want to be completely uh, longevity consciousness. Everything that I do is about longevity to consciousness. I'm trying to learn how to live longer, happier, and healthier. I have learned this for sure. Health and happiness are synonymous. If you are healthy, you are generally going to be happy because you're taking time to take care of yourself, and that's really important. Um, and when you have health and happiness, you are in harmony. These are my health, happiness, and harmony. Because when you spend the time to work on yourself to build up your health, you will find happiness. And from there, you have harmony in your life. That naturally occurs through the universe. The universe will provide all of the necessary scenarios, situations, events, to occur in perfect time for you to achieve your harmony, whatever that is for you, because each of us has our own harmony, our unique individual harmony that nobody else can play. It's unique to the individual, just like you're unique, but you're the same. You're the same as me, you're the same as everyone else around you, and you're the same as all of these um, trees and all of this grass, all of this stuff. We all came from the same place. We came from Mother. Mother Earth! Mother Earth! She's the mama. She's in charge. She makes the ultimate decisions. Not the government. No, not, not your parents. Not any authoritarian figure in your life. The ultimate decisions are made by Mother. Yeah. If she wants to change stuff, she does it. Right, and that's through consciousness, and that has a lot to do with us and our collective consciousness and our communities. The power of group consciousness is amazing, what you can do when you get together with some people and meditate. Meditate on peace. See how you're going to change your life. See how you're going to change your community. See how things transform around you. Because as we transform our communities at a grassroots level, everything changes around us. We don't have to buy into this governmental system. It is not necessary. We need to begin anew with compassion. Yes, begin anew with compassion. That's where we have to start. We all have to be equal as people. And then we'll all work it out together. Yes, this is possible. No, not because we're going to try and do it at a global level. We're going to do it in our own communities, at a grassroots level. Then we're going to go on the internet. We're going to go on Facebook. We're going to go on YouTube. We're going to make videos, and we're going to show people how we're growing food, how we're doing these things in our communities that are changing the face of the community. And this is how you spread the message. This is how we get it out there. This is how we evolve consciousness. We use the tools we have been given, that we have been provided for free, and we use them against authority. But we don't want to fight authority. There's no point in fighting. Fighting gets you nowhere. What you resist persists. 
just move on, move forward, do what you need to do, do I, what you came here to do, create your harmony. Because as we create harmony in ourselves, we create harmony in the world. It's just a natural occurrence. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Because we're cosmic mirrors of each other. Cosmic mirrors of bliss consciousness. Yeah! And we're all beautiful, gorgeous human beings. And we've all been placed here to work together, to, to cultivate this amazing space, and to work farther beyond, out into the galaxy, to see what else is going on out there. As soon as we quit fighting with each other, everything's possible. Everything, and I mean everything. Why, imagine one day with no... Oh, sir. See? One day. See how powerful that is? It blew the camera over. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mother. One day with no war. Imagine how many visitors we'd have. Oh. Yay, new friends. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of what you don't know. That's the biggest thing I've learned in my life. Don't be scared of what you don't know. Don't panic. It's all going to work out. It always does. Be patient. Be persistent. And be at peace. Yeah. Do your pHs. Your, what's your pH balance? Your harmony. Your peace. Yeah. Where are you? Where are you with that? Because that's what's important. That's when you'll do your best work. That's when you're the most creative. And that's when you will cultivate all of these things that you've been putting off and not getting to and bring them to fruition. Because everybody I know has a project they're working on somewhere, somehow. And most, a lot of people have a lot of projects that are all about 60% completed, some 30, some 70. Nobody finishes anything because we don't have the time. But we have to create that time. You have to figure out a way in your schedule to create time for yourself. Because it's more important than all the rest. If you're constantly helping other people and constantly doing things to appease other people, you're going to get sick, you're going to wear down, and you're going to fall apart. If you don't give yourself self-love, you cannot. I repeat, you cannot help anybody else. You are enabling people at this point. Because you need to be in a place of fully peaceful, harmonic bliss in order to really affect the world the, the way that you're supposed to. You are a cosmic mirror of bliss consciousness. Wow. Look in your eyes. Go look in the mirror. Go. Just stare inside your eyes and say, I love you. Look right in there and say, I love you. I love you. Wow. You're beautiful. You're amazing. I love you. Do it. Because you should. You are the universe. Becoming aware of itself. Why not see what galaxies are in your eyes? Because they're there. They exist. It's just what you choose not to see. There's so much here we don't see in this third dimensional reality. For you and for me, I would like to see happiness and harmony in your healthy body. So, um, I think that's, that's probably pretty good for now. Uh, that's been my f the completion of the 14th day fast. What I've, what I've learned is a culmination of a few different stories, a few different thoughts. I love you. Thank you for tuning in. This is Brent from Space Talbot. Uh, depending on how you know me, what, what time of my life you met me. But regardless, I love you and uh, I thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to my message. And uh, I hope you adapt it into your being. Um, know that you're a very adaptable. And challenge yourself to find that out. Put yourself in awkward, uncomfortable situations. Yeah, awkward, uncomfortable situations. Anything that scares you, you need to do. It's important because, it, because that's where you find your power, when you push through your fear. Because you know what that fear is? Marianne Williamson, false experiences appearing real. Yes, fear, false experiences appearing real. Aha! Never happens. 99% of the things we worry about never come to fruition. Unless we focus on them so much that we bring them out. The evolution of fear. Neil Donald Walsh, 
feeling excited and ready. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Now, how does that feel for scared? Feeling excited and ready. Yeah, that's my kind of fear. Let's do this. Bring it on. I don't know how, but I'm going to do it. That's how you got to look at stuff. I don't know how, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and see it from the end, see it finished, see it completed and work backwards. If you see the, the end product,